Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I will be coloring this line art here I've worked on earlier off camera. It's of my persona holding a cat sprout. I usually only use one jar of water for painting instead of using two at the same time like some other watercolor artists do. It's just something I prefer, but I do change out the water often, otherwise the colors will not be as vibrant. Oh look a kitty! I need to pet it. I usually have a color swatch key chart handy for viewing when I'm working on these types of pictures. They help me pick out my colors faster. At the current time of recording this, it is hot out and I have no air conditioner, so I have a fan on. In this video, I'm having fun with the video's pan and zoom editing features. Although some of it happened by accident, I don't have a proper phone stand currently, so I have a camera strapped to my a different type of stand with a big rubber band. So sometimes the rubber band slowly moves the camera in a different position on its own. And I only noticed when I started editing this video. After I get the character all painted up, then I need to plan out how I'm going to do the background. I made an art book cupboard with my brother, and in it is an art book that I will use for my background reference. I love the greenery scenes in the Totoro art book, so I picked that one out. This will be the reference I will be using for the background colors. It won't be exact, but I will try to get the basic overall look down. Sorry for the light glares on the pages, but I'm sure you can see the gist of it. I wasn't really thinking when I painted the sky with a small brush. Usually it's best to use larger brushes for making consistent colors in large areas. But with a small brush, my color didn't disperse evenly and so I ended up making a lot of adjustments to the sky later on. acknowledge the funkiness that's going on at the top of the painting in a moment, but at this time I just wanted to say that I had a hard time deciding how I should go on about coloring the background Kitty Sprout Hills. If you notice, I go back and edit them quite a lot on, in this image. I love it when it's shading time. Everything pops out and looks so much better once the shadows are applied. Oh 
Okay, so the top part of the image is disturbing and I don't know why all of the color pigment got absorbed up there. I'm usually pretty happy with Canson's Montfall paper, but this one just frustrated me by how it did that. But I've worked with watercolor enough not to panic. Stupid stuff like this happens and when it does I just use another medium on top of it. Mediums such as chalk pastel can make a neat, soft gradient effect over watercolor paintings. I've used them a few times in the past when I think that the characters I've drawn blend in too much with the background. And so I just give them a, a chalk hue and it pop the character out like a ton better. But as you can see here, I'm using it on the sky this time. And for the most part, that ugly blue line has disappeared. Once it's all applied, you can hardly make it out. Now I am using some white acrylic paint to touch up the clouds because I did a sloppy paint job in the sky. Actually, I'm just a sloppy painter altogether. I'm not very careful and I paint over the lines so often that I need to go back and use my mechanical pencil to crisp up the background pencil line art just to define the edges more. Oh no, my black lion kitty! He invades! Must pet! Anyway, I decided that I'm not satisfied with the furthest cat sprout hill in the background. After looking at a giant tree in the Totoro art book, I decide that I want to make the tree on the furthest cat sprout a bit bigger too. After watercoloring the tree, I used some gouache for some extra touch-ups. I hardly ever use gouache, but I'd like to. I've been watching a lot of artists these days use it for Ghibli scene paint with me videos and it's very inspiring. Not that you could see it all that well with the light reflecting off of it. My bad. Okay, so I'm pretty much done here now. So I'm going to show you the comparison of the book palette colors and compare it to the ones that I've chosen for my illustration. I could use more practice, but I still liked the end result. But I guess I'm still not done because I'm not satisfied how much the paper buckled from the water. I really should try taping down my illustrations sometime to prevent that. But for now, I'll grab a damp sponge that's not too soggy. And get the backside of the watercolor paper wet. I need some heavy items to compress the watercolor paper flat for at least six hours. The way to do it is to sandwich the damp watercolor paper in between two larger pieces of cardboard and weigh it down. Art books are nice and heavy, so I just use those. All of the ones I am using are very good games, by the way. So 
Six hours have passed, so now I can take the books off. And there you go! The watercolor is now nice and flat. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you all enjoyed seeing my process on this piece and I'll see you all again later. Bye for now.